Sometimes I feel like we should just rename our channel from GWT to GWF. Just Good Works fails. Guys, welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today we're gonna do another product overview, a little field test as well. And, and if you see the dirt, you can see I did a little pre-field test uh, the other day when I got this set up. I got it mounted, I couldn't help but try it out. It worked really well, we'll show you some more of that in action in a little bit, but let's give you a product overview of another Dirt Dog Made in America product right now. Now as always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boral Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, a little side to side this way, wheel spacers can make a big difference. Boral Spacers are made in America, they have a lifetime warranty. Find out more information at the link down below. Dirt Dog Subsoilers, you're gonna have several different options available. Up here in front, you're gonna have your heavy duty or your HD. You're going to see HD and then SS, which is subsoiler, and then you're going to see um, a, a two or a one. You're even going to see an S or an L on the end. I'll explain all of that. These are going to be options for the bigger compacts and utility tractors. Let's take a look back here at one for your smaller compacts. Okay, so now this is probably what more of you are recognizing as a subsoiler on your smaller compacts, uh, maybe even some subcompacts as well, as long as you can get enough lift height out of there. You're going to have to get this point from here above the ground so some of them could struggle i have not put one of these on a 1025 hour yet to see if that will lift it but maybe some of you guys out there have done that we will be sure to try it out and fill you in all right and so here's a nice profile view comparing the standard duty subsoiler versus the heavy duty you can see how big of a design difference there is there's a huge weight difference and don't worry if you don't pick up on all uh, the specs right here in the video we'll have listings available with all that information in there so you can see the weight uh, the horsepower range uh, the depth and so on so you can figure out and make the best choice for yourself all right so what you might use a subsoiler for is to break up hard pan all right and why you want to break up hard pan is for a couple of reasons number one it's to allow plant growth both the roots to reach down and get through those layers that they otherwise couldn't get through. So you're gonna get down to further nutrients, have healthier, deeper root systems for your plants. So without breaking up that soil, if it's been just packed down for years and years on end, the roots just can't break down through those different layers. So this is gonna help do that. And additionally, the same thing can be said for allowing water to get down through there. If it's hard pan, there's no way that the water can just saturate down through. It's gonna sit on top and pool and make a muddy mess. So if you have that hard pan type of situation, using a ripper to really break down through those deep layers is really one of the only tools for the job. All right, so we have a few different models to figure out. Again, the HD, we talked about that, that's heavy duty. So if you don't have that up there, you just have the SS, which is subsoiler, then you're gonna have a number two or one. And so that just means one ripper or two. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And then you're going to have an S or an L on the end. S is for short, L is for long, with the short ripping up to 19 inches in depth, with the long doing 23. Now on our standard subsoiler, there's just the one model to worry about. It doesn't get too complicated. This will actually go down to 25 and a half inches in depth. And this may look a little familiar. We covered something like this recently where some folks kind of made some, well, Add on pipes here, some uh, cable layers, so to speak, or it could be a, a water line layer, that kind of thing, where you just find a way to attach it to the backside. And as you're ripping the ground, you can lay down your cable, your wire, your water line, whatever you need to at the same time. So get creative, look at those videos because there could be a way to do that with this as well. Okay, so a few key details for your standard subsoiler. This is gonna be category one compatible only. It's not quick hitch compatible. This is actually protected by a shear pin. So if you do catch on something, your tractor's not going to want to tip back or something crazy. That shear pin will just break off and keep you nice and safe. Now down below, you're going to have a replaceable and reversible heat-treated shank on there. So if you wear that out or break it somehow, I don't know how you would, you can put a new one on if you need to. And so this is going to weigh in at 113 pounds. And it's going to be rated for tractors in the 25 to 45 horsepower range. Now if we start to talk about the heavy-duty series of subsoilers, well, they're a whole different ball game. And the first thing I notice is they are going to have parking stands two of them for the one shank and just one is required for the two shank ripper but these things are dwarfing the standard subsoiler in weight the single shank are going to weigh 276 pounds with the double shank weighing in at 450 pounds okay so a couple other differences too on the heavy duty version now these are going to be category one and category two three-point compatible as well as quick hitch compatible and i got to read this to make sure i'm telling you correctly 
but you need approximately 35 to 40 horsepower per shank, all right? So a double shank means you need somewhere in that 70 to 80 horsepower range to use it properly. You can be more in that 40-ish horsepower range, 45, 35, anywhere around there to use a single shank. A couple other details worth noting on the two shank. You can see these are bolted on, all right? If you look over at the one shank, it's a fixed position, but these are bolted on, meaning you can adjust these in and out for your certain application that you might have, or if you end up only needing one you could take one off and just use the one if you wanted to and as you may have noticed they have an inch and a quarter thick shanks on here with heat treated plow points hey and we have a lot of other videos coming up with other dirt dog attachments other tilling planting plowing prepping all that kind of stuff different tools you can use for your tractor taking a look here at some cold packers that we have for sale we're also going to have all-purpose plows we have pulverizers we have disc harrows we have all sorts of stuff coming and even if you don't own a tractor if you own an AT or a UTV, we've got a whole dirt dog lineup of attachments coming in for that, along with Rammy brush cutters, Rammy mowers, that kind of thing too. A lot of different stuff. We bought all this land out here to do all sorts of different projects with tractors and UTVs and ATVs, show you what it's all about so we're not just selling it to you, we can show you how to use it or how not to use it in certain situations too. So if you have ideas or suggestions, you wanna have videos or things to show, try to get those to us before we do the videos, that way we can incorporate them for you. Okay, so today is February 28th, we're in Michigan, so it's winter time. You can see a lot of the snow has melted off. It was supposed to be in the 40s today, but it sure doesn't feel like it. So things are starting to get a little muddy on top of the ground. It's still definitely frozen uh, for a good chunk of it as well, but a good test to see what this setup can do. Going to use it on a Kubota M4D 071 tractor. Uh, just got this in last fall to use for myself for different projects and everything. So a good application. So a little bit later this spring, I am going to plant a screen. All right, I'm going to plant that for a little privacy out here. I'm going to plant it for some food plot screening as well, so that when I want to act access my stands next fall, we can do that too. So we're gonna use the ripper along that same line. I'm gonna rip down kind of along a certain perimeter here as well, and then also uh, on a line to protect our property from a neighboring property as well, and give us some privacy there. We'll probably follow this up by plowing or tilling it a little bit later in the spring before planting, but this is gonna be a good first step. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you would like to see more, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you own a tractor, or maybe you're in the market for a tractor, we can help out with tractor attachments. We sell and ship them all over the country every day of the week. Visit us at goodworkstractors.com.
sometimes I feel like we should just rename our channel from GWT to GWF, just good works fails, because <laughs> we have a decent amount of them. And uh, we bust a shear bolt here. Now again, I did this just a couple days ago because I was excited, wanted to see how this thing worked. I put it in the ground just on this side of the field. I can see where I did it right over there and it worked just fine. However, this section of ground, for some reason, is a lot more frozen and it was just ripping out chunks of earth I went down the whole way or as far as I could go and it just wouldn't move. It was just sitting there spinning. I had to raise it all the way up. And you can see it broke a shear bolt. It did what it was supposed to do, protected the system, but it's kind of frustrating because I thought we were able to get this done today. Fortunately, this time of year, it's kind of like bonus time, right? You, if you can get something done on your ground in that late winter application, you go for it. But today it just didn't work out. However, you still got to see how this thing works and how it will protect your tractor or the attachment if something does go wrong. So we'll get this done sooner or later. We've got a good stretch of mild weather coming up, but it could freeze again. If not, we'll tackle it another month or so. Get another shear bolt on here, replace it, and tackle this project. I want to get this thing ready to go. Our screen bed ready to go. We're going to rip it, then we're going to plow it or till it, and then we're going to plant. you got to check out this new seed blend by Northwoods Whitetail. They've been selling it for a few years now. They've done a lot of testing all over the country with it, but it'll grow as high as 14 foot tall. So that's what we're going to plant here. I'm really excited to get that in the ground, but you know, you start to get spring fever this time of year, and that's what I have a case of right now. Well, regardless, I hope you learned something and enjoyed today's video. If you like seeing tractor stuff, this is the place to be. Hit that subscribe button to see more. And if you want something for your tractor for the front end loader for the three-point hitch, we're happy to help. We sell and ship all over the country every day. Check out GoodWorksTractors.com. So I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.